This is an almost failure that was caught by an undergraduate student. She asked a question to a daring structural engineer and he realized that he made a mistake. A mistake so big that it could cost 200,000 people their lives. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm an engineering professor and I teach my students that making mistakes is human. We're all gonna do it. But sometimes these mistakes can have a big impact. We're talking about the Citicorp Center, which is in Manhattan, New York. It's built in 1977. 1.3 million square feet. It was built for about, in today's dollars, about 880 million. It's an iconic structure on the New York skyline. The architect was Hugh Stubbins Jr. And the engineer, one of the greatest of his time, William LeMessure. One of the challenges with this structure is that it was to be built on the site of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church, which was built in 1905. And the congregation at St. Peter's, they didn't want to move. They loved their church and they loved the spot. So through talking with them, they said, guess what? We'll let you keep your spot and we'll build you a new church. They were excited about that. The church happened to be located right where the major column of the structure was supposed to be. So Bill Stubbins came to La Measure and said, can we change the structural system? So the original plan had four columns, four major columns in the corners of the building and one major column in the center. La Measure said, what if we just slide the columns? What if we just move them over to have our new plan? Well, this is what it looked like. This is the side view. If I was to cut the building right here and start to look at it, this is what the original structure looked like. Major columns on the sides, and then these light floor systems or beams here in the center. With the new one, there was going to be a new challenge. How are we going to support these edges? How are we going to keep them from deflecting too much? So we came up with a pretty cool idea. Pine trees. What do you mean? Well, he said, I've seen pine trees and they kind of look like this. They have branches that go up ever so often. Support the structure like that. Here's another view. You can see these, these diagonal members help hold up these beams. One of the things that control tall building design is the wind. In New York City, they get hurricanes. They get pretty high winds there. It's a big deal. And there's a lot of concern called drift of buildings moving in and out and possibly hitting one another. Here's an image, the City Corp Center with the, with the wind load on it. And you can see when it does that and it wants to deflect to the side, then this side's gonna be in tension. It's gonna wanna be pulled up. And this side's gonna be in compression. It's gonna be wanna be pushed down. And that means when I design for these diagonal members on this face, they're going to look something like this. But what LeMessure figured out was the gravity load, the weight of the people and the office furniture and everything else was so high that it was more than the wind load. So on his calculations, this is much larger than this. And so he didn't really have to design for these members to be in tension or to be pulled. They're all designed to be overall in compression. So if I look at this connection, they just used very simple bolts to hold them together. And then an undergraduate student named Diane Hartley at Princeton was doing her undergraduate thesis under David Billington, an amazing, amazing professor of structural engineering. And she was actually studying the City Corp Center. And she couldn't quite figure out how the structural system worked. She actually called up LeMessure's company and asked questions. And said, when I analyze a structure like this, it seems to make sense. But if I analyze for a diagonal wind, structure looks like it may fail. 
it actually may fail in only a 70 mile per hour wind. Holy cow. LeMessure never thought about this load case. He spent a lot of time thinking about it. And then he realized he needed to get some help. So LeMessure went, first contacted his insurance company, contacted the lawyers, contacted Citicorp, contacted the architect, and said, we have a problem. I've made a mistake. He was very forthcoming about it. He said, we've got to get this fixed. He even came with them with an idea for a repair. That's one tip. If you ever make a mistake, bring the solution with you. To make the fix, they ended up taking that bolted connection and welding it. They needed a lot of welders. They hired every welder they could find in a hundred mile radius of New York City. And they made all the repairs at night over a three month period. And they didn't tell anyone in the building what was going on. The only people that knew that were public officials were the mayor, the building commissioner, and the head of the welders union. Why did they need the head of the welders union? Because they needed to get somebody to convince those welders to work only at night to make the repairs. They would actually pull back parts of the structure, exposing them, fix everything, weld it up, put it back, and not let anyone know what was going on. They did it over about a three month period. And the story was not made public for about 20 years. So what did LeMessure do right? He admitted his mistake. He let other people know about it. He told others about the problem and he didn't create a hysteria. Kept everything un under control, nice and calm. He assembled a great team to make the repairs and they went flawlessly. But what did LeMessure do wrong? There's many people that have criticized LeMessure and they say that he should have told the public. If you would have worked in that building, would you have wanted to know? Would you have wanted to know that your life was in danger? Because if that building goes and falls over from a wind load, it's going to take out other buildings around it. People estimated it could have killed 200,000 people. And a 70 mile per hour wind happens often. That's kind of scary. He didn't report what had happened for over 20 years. He kept it a secret. I'm sure he wasn't proud of what he did, but he needs to let other people know so that they don't make the same mistake. And the biggest mistake of all is that he didn't have other people check his work. Not well enough. I like to say mistakes, you can't live with them. You can't live without them. If you have a job where you do things for other people, especially you do things for the public on a large scale, we can't afford mistakes. Hey, thank you so much for watching this. I love making these videos. And leave me a comment below. Did LeMessure do the right thing? What do you think? Thanks. Take care. Bye.